Hey guys, I'm back with something a little bit different. You know your girl is multifaceted, multidimensional. I had this download and I don't want y'all to laugh at me. I am a big kid when it comes to cartoons. So I don't know if you guys seen that movie Leo on Netflix. I love, love, love it. But I was getting so many downloads, spiritual downloads, that your girl got to like look. <laughs> Your girl got to do some research. There's a lizard. There's a turtle. There were so many different um, representations and things that were significant that stood out on the spiritual level watching this cartoon. No, I didn't watch it with my grandkids. They probably, I think they seen it. Um, but this was very appropriate. Unfortunately, it's sad today that certain cartoons that seem like they for kids parents have to watch it first just to make sure it's appropriate because some of these cartoons is just way too, y'all know what I mean, right? Too sexualized for a cartoon. It just, a lot of um, projected programming. So I do have my spirit animal deck and this was a good time to bring these back out. I did do like a series like last year on these. Um, so I do work with the different spirit animals. So you guys may resonate with the lizard or with the turtle if it is one of um, your totem animals, spirit totem animals. Or you guys could be interested in finding out uh, what your Chinese zodiac is. They Those represent and those have like the different animals as well. So there's a big um, emphasis. Somebody look up. Um, ox and somebody look up hawk somebody look up uh, autumn and somebody look up beaver okay so I got some reading material um, it'll probably split into two videos so guys I hope you are here for this again this is something a little bit different all right this is like this is like we're gonna call this playtime story time but it is also uh, the lizard is tapping into the divine masculine energy so you guys can be in that energy where uh, it is you're questioning are you tired of holding yourself back do you feel like you're being held back from something from your imagination your passion and from your desires so I do I want to just talk about <laughs> the movie a little bit and listen I'm giving it away right it's a kid's cartoon so it doesn't matter doesn't matter it doesn't matter right so Leo, the right in the beginning, um, the, the these are students. So this movie is based around kids uh, going to the fifth grade. Okay, so the teacher that they have is pregnant and a substitute needs to come in and take her place. Now the teacher represents the heart chakra, right? She was such a loving teacher, um, divine feminine energy for one, she was pregnant. So that automatically made me think of uh, the Empress card in the Tarot, right? So Divine Feminine Energy, she has to go off, you know, and she, early to, to give bed rest. She has to rest, right? Divine Feminine got to rest. <laughs> you guys got to make sure you are rested. So I'm really channeling from that movie, okay? This is what's happening. We're getting a little bit of, we're getting something, right? I think this is really cool and, and exciting. My name is Bella for any newcomer. Excuse me if I didn't say that. And guys, make sure you have your water. Just get your water. Let me start drinking. I do. I get very thirsty when I start channeling. All right. So the teacher is in her crown chakra, right? Very illuminating, <clears throat> you know, and then also because she's a teacher, a teacher that actually loves children. She also, when the, when the students do good, the teacher gives them heart. So they have like a chart in the back of the room. You know, when you went to school, you got a star. This teacher gives hearts, right? So she was in that, um, her heart chakra was, was balanced, right? And she also sang. She sang to the children. So they really love coming to school and they love, they love this teacher. Okay. Now that's really um, important because children today really um, need those that extra encouragement. They uh, they need that one-on-one -on -one time. They need parents. They need uh, to be seen and they need to be heard and they need to know that they're loved and protected. 
Now, these children, each one of them in the class, you know, had their own personal issues. You know, and, and it's sad because as adults, we kind of look at children like, what do, what do they have to be stressed about? What do they have to be worried about, right? They don't have to pay bills or anything like that. But there's things that's going on at home that um, are getting projected onto children. So I think as adults, we have to remember that children are watching us and children are listening to us. And even when parents try to be quiet and have arguments in another room or children can pick up on that energy. Children are the closest energy to the most high God, right? So we really have to... Um, we really have to tap into their energy, but tap into our own inner child energy as well. <clears throat> Bringing this back. Um, so I'm just giving a little bit about this movie, Leo, that's on Netflix, right? Now, the substitute teacher comes in and she's, you know, older, older, older white woman, uh, not happy. Uh, I'm only, I don't know why I'm giving a description of her. The, the original teacher was maybe of um, maybe a Spanish descent or, you know, something like that. I, I don't think that, I don't even know why Spirit is having me mention that. Watch the movie. So, but anyway, this is an old school teacher. Maybe there is a reason why I'm, I'm giving a description of the teacher. She's an old school teacher, um, a, you know, very strict. Now, the first teacher, they, they got taught more with playing and, and they got taught more with the laptops. They had them more moving into the new age of technology, the way kids are right now. And this other teacher wanted, you know, the black boy. Um, she wanted them to have these big textbooks. By the time they went home at the end of the day, they had the big book bags on, which study has shown wearing those book bags is not healthy for children's spine or for their backs, right? I don't even want to get into the whole political thing about public school because I have my opinions on public school and um, how that's designed just for children um, to be part of a system just, just to work, right? Public school is not teaching financial literacy. They're not teaching taxes. They're not teaching how to grow food. They're not uh, teaching how to buy land. It's This is not what that was supposed to be, but I had to throw that in there really quickly. All right. So the, now this main teacher comes in and, you know, these, these children are terrified. She takes down all those hearts. She's like, no, I give them merit. And, the two, and then she threw it and it was like um, metal blades, which was like a weapon in the school. So whatever. Uh, but the children didn't know what that was. They wasn't used to getting like um, detention or anything in, in, in that nature, right? They had a very loving, loving, loving teacher that was leaving for maternity leave. But now this other teacher was more like discipline, 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 which there's nothing wrong with discipline, right? It's how things are balanced. So there was, it somewhat seemed like, okay, these students really could have had a balance between that first teacher that was very, you know, she incorporated more fun, loving, singing, you know, and she, incorporate that with the discipline as well right because that's what children need and as adults don't we need we need to be real disciplined with ourselves as well and different things that's happening in our life this is probably where spirit totem animals come into our energy uh to help with those things especially if there's any type of blockages all right so moving along with this movie the disciplinary teacher the substitute, part of the discipline on Friday was taken, there was two pets, the lizard and the turtle. It was, the responsibility was to take this pet home for the weekend, bring this pet back home alive. <laughs> and you know, now these pets, of course, this is a cartoon, so these pets are talking and they like, oh shit, last time we went to some kid's house, we got abused, they didn't feed us, yada, 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 right? So really, that also just made me think like, you know, if you're going to let children, that is a good responsibility for children to have if somebody is um, pondering or, um, you know, kind of going back and forth, should you have a pet in a home for your children to be responsible for, okay? So maybe that resonates with somebody. So these are talking animals, right? When they, the little girl that was, nobody wanted to take a pet home. The teacher said, if you, if somebody doesn't volunteer, I'm going to pick somebody to volunteer. So finally, one girl does volunteer and 
she said, I volunteer because nobody should feel um, left out or nobody should feel alone, right? Or, or not wanted. Somebody should not feel wanted. Now, when she said that, it just, on a spiritual level, it really made me think of like, you know, the indigo, uh, us as star seeds, indigos, rainbow, you know, rainbow children, light workers, um, you know, earth angels, you know, that came here, terrestrials, to the, <laughs> that came here voluntarily here on earth to have a mission and a purpose, you know, and for many of us to be beings of the beacon of organic light and awaken others, right? So her volunteering, <laughs> yup. <laughs> Her volunteering did all of that. I'm about to break this all the way down, guys. All right, so I got to just try to stay on track because I don't know. I'm like, do I got adult ADHD? I get excited too fast. All right, wheel is all the way back in. So she takes the, um, she decides to take the lizard, right? Because she didn't know which one to take. And the teacher's just like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, choose, choose, choose. And then she, she you know, she shouts out, uh, Leo. So Leonardo is the name of the lizard. She takes him home. Now she's known in the class as somebody who talks so much that she puts people to sleep. She talks so much that people just drift off somewhere else. She talks so much that the other kids do not ask her for playtime. The little children don't play with her. She by herself because this girl, as soon as she opens up her mouth, it's all about herself. When she gets home with this, um, with the lizard in her room, the lizard starts to talk to her. So she's about to bug out and let her parents know about this lizard. The lizard's like, shh, 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 don't, shh. you can't tell anybody, only you can hear me. And she's like, well, why? Be you know, she answers, she says it herself. He doesn't even say, because you're special. She says, is it because I'm special? And he's like, no, oh, okay. The more she's talking, he is a very wise, this is a, well, this is like a 74-year-old lizard. So he starts speaking to her like a grandparent would speak to her, right? Like an elder would speak to her. And he lets her know, you know, you would probably, you know, she starts confessing or she just starts um, venting and saying everything about school and things that she's worried and scared about, things to that nature. So... He's listening to her, like really listening, where she's not being listened to by nobody else in her family. They just like, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, okay, yeah, uh-huh. Like sometimes parents are so busy that these kids just come in and you like, yeah, okay, uh-huh. Uh -huh. You don't even know what you just said, yeah, uh-huh, okay, too, right? So he gives her the advice that if you would just stop talking so much about yourself and just ask the other students about them talk about them and she's like mm, I never I'll give that a try she gets back to school on Monday and she does just that all right she does just that and she realizes quick fast in a hurry everybody is not they're her friend I mean when she did that one of the other students was like really taken back like you literally you know asked how my day was you know uh and, and that child is not getting that much attention either. So they became friends after that. So a lot of the other students became friends with her, right? So this pretty much happened with all the students. So each student, so she goes back and she's like, she never mentions that this lizard could talk, but she just goes back and says how amazing uh, the lizard is. Who, and when the teacher says, again, at the end of the week, who's going to take the lizard home or take one? Nobody chooses to turtle for some reason I don't know. maybe I have to break that one down but nobody chooses the turtle everybody chooses Leo and when she wants him for a second time now this is getting um all the other children curious that what is so cool about this lizard so the teacher's like no everybody has to take a turn so no two turns at once right so this happens going forward with each student that when that took Leo home on the weekend, he ended up talking to them. They only thought he was talking to them. And he gave them all su such sound advice as to what each person, each child's 
issues, trauma, or, or what their, um, uh, you know, what their vice was, what their stress was, what their insecurities was. Um, so, so that was really interesting. It was the elder, you know, so we have our elders, we have our ancestors who are also assisting us. So there's so many different tools that we could use while we are in this 3D, you know, we are, you know, in, uh, we're in our frequency of our Christ conscious and we're in our frequency of the 5D, but we're still in this 3D, you know, matrix, you know, to a degree, you know, doing the mundane thing. We have all these different tools here on earth. This human suit, right, to a degree is, is, is limited. <laughs> it is limited, right? Earth thing, there's limitations here, right? But then the sky is the limit at the same time to using the frequency of imagination and using the frequency of your mind. All right, so Spirit is just like, you know, had me go right to the computer and look up the lizard uh, symbolism and the meaning. Uh, and immediately I picked up that we do want to be, as divine feminines, we want to be tapped into our divine masculine energy. So this is the, the energy um, that maybe we're all mirroring at this time. I know at this time I am in my divine, the divine masculine energy, not distorted masculine energy where sometimes we're watching certain videos and they're saying divine feminine, they're speaking of his higher self, not in, a, you know, where he's in his root chakra, right? He's in that, we're not in that energy of victimhood. You know, we're not in the energy of surviving. We're not in that energy, that, uh, that, that root chakra, which I'm not making the root chakra a, a negative thing, but when you're just in your lower chakras um, and, and you're having a hard time getting to the sacral and to the solar plex and to the heart and to the throat, you know, and there, there's, there's, there's like a hundred, there's over maybe a hundred chakras, but you know, we speak about the, the seven basic ones, not with the rainbow, uh, inverted or reversed the, the way that we see it all right so i do have a little bit of reading to do guys all right now the first question when i look this up it says are you are you craving creative inspiration are you craving creative inspiration do you feel that block right now okay so so again if you are divine feminine oh you know what this is vice this could go vice versa Divine feminine, divine masculine, we know it's just energy, right? But in, in, the, in the essence of female, essence of male, since we have to say all of that, if you are feeling uh, like a creative block right now, it is probably important to tap into the divine masculine energy. What are your passions? What is, you know, what does your imagination look like and how can you bring that to your creativity? And knowing that you are fully capable of expressing what your desires are without feeling any type of guilt or shame for that. And it says, are you tired of things holding you back? Are you tired of holding yourself back? Are you tired of things holding you back? What's holding you back? All right. So the, the power of the lizard spirit totem animal can help. Right, so this is where this was very significant. The lizard teaches you how to ignite the flames of your greatest passions, all while showing you how to let go of habits or beliefs that hinder success. The vow deeply into the lizard symbolism and the meaning to find out how the animal spirit guide can ed educate you, stir, and inspire you. All right, so look up, look up into that um, for whoever that resonates with. Re from regrowing body parts to swift movement, when it comes to the lizard, it, 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 it is an animal helper. There are many attributes to appreciate. One characteristic defined in the lizard's meaning is the fact that the creature sheds its skin like a snake and it gets rid of parasites. It is both lizard and snake. This symbolism of physical emotional, intellectual growth, and the act of leaving behind what you have outgrown, right? So that energy of the divine masculine, that, that energy of uh, having the ego deaf to a degree, knowing to use your ego 
when it serves the proper purpose, okay? So shedding the ego, releasing what no longer um, what what no longer serves you, all right? So a lot of times the divine feminine does go through the ego, um, death, or dark night in the soul. We do go through the shadow work before the divine masculine, but you could be a female that's coming into your own or coming into your spirituality and you yourself could be in more masculine energy that I'm speaking to you right now. All right, so the second behavior highlighting the lizard energy is the self amputation and regeneration to the re yeah to regenerate its itself right while on the surface the action sounds awful it's a, a self-defense mag magnetism so the lizard can get out of the predator's grasp over time the animal's tail grows back but often smaller and sometimes in a different color survivor's instinct and a, a Adapt, adoption, uh, I can't, let me tell you guys, I can't read sometimes, I mean I can read, but, are significant to the, it's, it's pronouncing some things, I already told y'all, I am not human, and English is not my first language, thank you, so to, to adapt to a significant part of the lizard's symbolism, lizard's defensive techniques also symbolize the need to release harmful aspects of yourself or attributes holding on to old habits or outgrown beliefs hold you back from achieving a good health happiness or success so right there this was you know in the movie the way i got like these downloads there's also sacrificing something whether this is like no soda for 30 days, no meat for three days, um, uh, green juice fast for 21 days, you know, doing something consistently, uh, doing it on repeat to break a habit, something that is blocking and holding one back for some old patterns, old traditions, and old uh, ways of thinking. So having to reprogram your mind. And um, that that's what I got from the self uh, to amputate right to amputate not to physically amputate but to phys physically self amputate something within us that's holding us back so this could be again smoking cigarettes too much sugar uh too much shopping too much sleeping too much tv on and on and on and on i'm babbling you guys are understanding what, what i'm saying any type of old habits right creating new habits so you're able to achieve good health happiness and success so working with the lizard animal, this is what this would be. This is what this would be doing. Somebody is also dealing with um, tapeworms or the children dealing with tapeworms. So, so a lot of detox and um, maybe getting zinc. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an expert. Um, but really looking into things that remove heavy metal, parasite, detox. Uh, somebody also may need a colonic or like an enema. Okay, so then it gets into the colors because we had spoke about the shock, the the chakras. So that was interesting because she, um, the teacher, the sub, the not the substitute, the original teacher. As soon as her energy that they show with the, with, I'm just like if every student can have a teacher that was so loving, you know, because we have some teachers who don't like children. Why did they get in the profession of teaching? I don't know, but these are impressionable minds. So then when you have these teachers who have these um, low frequency, demonic, reptilian, archon, archon, um, hate children, teachers, they're very impressionable on the ch children's mind and they're very impressionable on stop daydreaming, stop imagination, stop, grow up. You need to grow up and that is the furthest from the truth and that is is scarring and is causing um traumatic things for children when when they have to be in a classroom with a teacher that does not like them and things are being said that you may not even know what's being said to your child but you see that your child's personality has changed um they're, they're sad you know it's something that really should get looked into um 
schools are not the same where I remember where I could go to my child's school and sit in the classroom, you know, and after like the whole mass shooting and, uh, you know, the, the coronavirus and things of that nature, the parents are not allowed to just come in their child's school the way they, they the way they used to. So, so it's really unfortunate that it's this separate uh, institution that there's this divide between parent, teacher, and, and student. It's, it's, there's not a collective thing working over, you know. Um, and there's predictions that in the next couple of years, there won't be no more public school. There'll be homeschool, and homeschool would mean, you know, teachers, principals creating their own um, curriculum, right? Whether, uh, even if it is something that still has to get um, sent through a, some sort of board of ed education um, like that to a degree, but they have more free range on what the children are learning. So there will be, you know, um, incorporating how to eat healthy, how to grow food, how to get land, maybe how to do taxes, how to save money, you know, um, investments. And that's, of course, older students, you know, younger students, even, you know, incorporating meditation or, you know, if they may think meditation is too advanced, but just teaching the children breathing exercises, right? Things to help them fully develop, um, still incorporating those life skills that children are going to need when they become an adult, a set of you know, things that if you think about what you learned in elementary school, junior high school, high school, some of those things you don't even remember, some of those things that you don't even use at this time anymore. So the colors that we have, 